Well, good Wednesday morning, my friends. I'm Pastor Ben Hayes from First Baptist Church, Dadeville, Alabama, bringing you our thought for the day. At least it is Wednesday for you. It's last Thursday for me, and I can tell you that today, Wednesday, I'm probably very sad because it's the day that I have to take my three granddaughters back uh, to their mamas. And uh, it's been a great week. I know that. Uh, we always have lots of fun. Uh, so pray for us as we uh, rest today. But anyway, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 9 as we continue our journey through this wonderful work of wisdom that King Solomon has given to us. Uh, even in his depression, he's managed to show us some truths that are very important to our lives. And yesterday we talked about the fact that he, he recognized that all of the things that we do as the children of God, the works that we do, are in the palm of God's hands as he directs our path, as he guides us to uh, accomplish our purpose in life. And I told you that he finally got it, like a, a light bulb that flashes on and then burns out. <laughs> Look at verse 2. All things come alike to all. One event happens to the righteous and the wicked, to the good, the clean, and the unclean, to him who sacrifices and him who does not sacrifice. As is the good, so is the sinner. He who takes an oath as he who fears an oath. This is an evil in all that is done under the sun, that one thing happens to all. He lost it. He was going so good. And then he lost it. Because here's what he's saying. It's an evil thing, the fact that everybody suffers, whether you're good or bad. Everybody has good things happen to them, whether you're good or bad. It's one of those things that he can't quite grasp because he's grown up in this Jewish mindset that says that if you're righteous, God's going to bless you. And if you're unrighteous, God's going to curse you. And if you are blessed, you must be righteous. And if you are cursed, you must be unrighteous. He forgets the fact that the Bible teaches us that Good things happen to bad people. Bad things happen to good people. It's just a part of life. And he says that that is one of the evil things under the sun. And then look at what he says. Truly the hearts of the sons of men are full of evil. Madness is in their hearts while they live. And after that, they go to the dead. Well, I think he's right. Well, I know he's right. Evil is in the hearts of men. The Bible tells us that. Our hearts are deceptively wicked. They will lie to us. They will cheat us. Here, here's the thing. We, uh, we think that we're good people, and all of a sudden we think there's something that we want, and our heart says, it's okay. It's got to be good because it's a good thing. So go after it. Do what it takes to get it. And we listen to our heart. We follow along, and we find ourselves doing things that we deep down know that we shouldn't. But our heart justifies. We're experts at rationalization. We can make anything appear to be good. At the same time, we can make anything appear to be bad as well. It's all in our hearts because they are evil. And, and, and I think about, as he's talking about this, he says, madness is in their hearts while they live. Truth is, once we die, the heart issue is, is dealt with. And the Bible tells us that it's appointed unto men once to die. After this, the judgment. That's why it's important that in this life we get this right. Not that we're always doing right things. Not that we're always perfect and holy. But that we understand that our only hope is to be forgiven by the grace of a holy God. That's the key to this. We all mess up. We all stumble and fall. We all follow our hearts at times when we shouldn't, when we ought to be listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. But the good news is that God has told us, he's promised us that if we will confess our sin, if we will come to him humbly repentant of those times when we mess up, he'll forgive us our sins and he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
even as far back as the Old Testament, even in the Garden of Eden, we see that when God killed the animals to provide the clothing for Adam and Eve and the blood of those animals made a covering for them. That's what the word atonement means. God has atoned for our sin. He's paid the price through Jesus Christ, his son, so that we can be together with him. Our sins are wiped away forever. Think about that today. Would you like to have that? Would you like to know that your sins have been forgiven? Would you like to know that you are in a relationship with a heavenly father who loves you unconditionally? All you have to do is cry out to him and tell him you want Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior. You trust the fact that he died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose again. And the Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Think about that today. If you make that decision, call me. Let me know. Let's pray together. God bless.